Hi, it's Chris from Open Photo. Thanks for joining me today on what is the start of a journey backwards. Um, back to where my interest in photography started. Um, it was back in the late 60s, around about 1968. 69 I'm not quite sure I was around about 12 um, and uh, I uh, was fascinated uh, with what my uncle was doing um, he had a uh, rangefinder camera and he was doing his own uh, developing and printing and my interest grew from that um, before I get into the um, uh, the detail of that, um, I think it's good to remind us where we are today. Um, I'm using digital, um, as many people do. Still have some film cameras that I use, um, but using cameras like the Nikon 850 um, DSLR. Um, in my opinion, one of the best uh, DSLRs that Nikon made as a creative camera um, before they really have switched over to um, mirrorless, uh, the mirrorless systems, um, which have their, their merits. But uh, for me, I love this. Um, may not be their best, they may not be their fastest, but for me, everything that I need to do, I can do on this camera. Um, the fact that it has all the knobs and dials on it, um, it makes no difference to me because I shoot everything manually. So automation is um, uh, a, a kind of a secondary thing. Although, yeah, we get used to it. Uh, in addition, to that um, I'm also using this lovely beast which is the Hasselblad medium format digital camera um, it has the same sensor size as the Nikon uh, 50 megapixels but the sensor on this is double the size um, it is um, incredibly uh, accurate very sharp but, but most of all has the most amazing dynamic range on the images and that's because of the sensor um, you can actually see not many knobs and dials on this um, it's because most of it is done within the camera but there's not a huge amount it actually is supposed to be shot manually although it has all the automation on it but most people that have these will will shoot manually um, so that's where we are um, but thinking about my first camera um, what I had back in that late 60s and it was a camera that was gifted to me um, because of my interest in photography um, uh, I think the family club club together and bought me my first camera which was the awesome cosmic 35 and I got one um, it was built in the USSR as it was then um, this is pre Russia um, and made out of high quality plastic that is still no cracks on this one today um, so this is now over this is about 54 55 years old this camera and um, it is in fabulous condition um, to tell you a bit about it though because uh, it was actually quite um, uh, quite a difficult camera to use considering what we have today um, the uh, 
viewfinder here the little window that you can see me going through um, when you look through that you can basically compose your shot but there's no in-house it, it on board um, light measuring there's no on board focusing uh, literally it was a plastic window just for your cropping um, but it did the job uh, to focus um, you have an outer manual ring uh, I don't know if you can see all the numbers around there are basically in feet and you had to gauge and estimate um, what the uh, distance was and I can always remember I was constantly asking my parents do you think that's 10 foot away or is it further um, but yeah that is your focusing and then the aperture is a tiny little ring in inside there which if I'm right in saying um, went uh, down to f4 uh, up to f16 so um, yeah fairly medium uh, range on that um, and then you got the speed the shutter speed uh, which is the other ring on here uh, that you turned around and again that r ran the fastest that you could sh use um, and fire the shutter was at 250th second uh, which these days is pretty slow uh, uh, so uh, the other part of the adjustment is your film speed which <coughs> excuse me at the time was always ASA as opposed to ISO that it is now and that was adjusted through this outer ring there which um, again let me just check but you couldn't run a film greater than 200 ASA um, so most of the time you we, I was using 100 ASA films in this or ISO um, the other little window that's on there is the film count so once you put your load your film up in the back you've got to make sure that you adjust that ring to zero or otherwise you'd lose count of uh, where your films films go so you've set the, your camera up you've gone through all the palaver of estimating everything you're not quite sure what you're going to get and it's time to take a photograph and that was done by this little cocking lever and you pulled that down and it clicked into position and you are now ready to fire and the button on the top you would press that and you would end up with this lovely sound and that's your first photograph taken wind it on and then when you've finished your film you would actually manually um, wind it back into the uh, film cassette no motor drives no electronic motors on this one it's um, all hands on and uh, the other thing I'll show you in the back so you have had a little lever there you pulled that the whole back came off and uh, there's the whoops let's get that in there there's the insides and again it's all in really good order this, this one um, and I'm looking to run some film through it uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what comes out of this 55 year old camera um, uh, although I'm not expecting fantastic results it's going to be um, 
a step back in time and I will be doing uh, the processing of the film as well which I'll add into uh, another video as well so that's it for now um, so we've gone from that back to that um, and um, I look forward to seeing you next time goodbye